Erev Tov, Chavrin, I'm Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And what we're seeing today after Senator Lindsey Graham spoke with President Trump, we're going to look at what he said before he spoke to him and then what he says after he spoke with him. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham uh, really <clears throat> seeming to indicate from our perspective here that President Trump's pullout from Syria may be of a much broader uh, war that could be coming in the near future. Although Senator Lindsey Graham does not uh, indicate one way or the other that particular issue, there's some other things I think you're going to find very interesting tonight as we try to bring this out. Uh, clearly, different things that are happening on the ground in Syria that may very well uh, give us this inclination that a bigger war is about to erupt in the Middle East. Let's listen in first what Senator Lindsey Graham had to say here. This is on CNN, and then he comes out on CBS, and uh, we pick up what he says there as well. Listen into this here. As to Syria, there are three things important to this country. Number one, make sure that ISIS never comes back in Syria. That's why we need to keep some of our troops there. They're inside the 10-yard line and defeating ISIS, but we're not there yet. How if are you going to the Kurds are going to get slaughtered. I'm going to talk to him at lunch. He has talked to General Dumpert. I got a call from General Dumpert. The president is reconsidering how we do this. He's frustrated. I get it. People should pay more. They should fight more. But we're not the policemen of the world here. We're fighting a war against ISIS. They're still not defeated in Syria. I'm asking the president to make sure that we have troops there to protect us. Don't outsource our national security to some foreign power. If we leave now, the Kurds will get in a fight with Turkey. They could get slaughtered. Who would help you in the future? And if we leave now, there'll be a land bridge from Tehran to Beirut. And this is something you're going to tell the president like against today. Israel. <clears throat> now, it's true. I agree with him. They'll definitely they'll have a bigger supply of weapons to fight against Israel. But one of the biggest issues right now, as he said, uh, he says he's blaming the Kurds are going to be picking a fight against Turkey. Kurds are not going to pick a fight with Turkey, but I can guarantee you one thing. We've already seen the evidence of the Turkish forces amassing already against the Syrian border to attack the Kurds. So that's where the big issue comes down at. Now, uh, while this was being said here, we just had a report coming out on Amman News says that it says breaking news here in their title of their article unconfirmed reports of some Turkish backed rebels retreating from Manbij. That's kind of interesting. It says here some Turkish backed rebel factions have been allegedly given orders to withdraw from the outskirts of the Manbij city. The Step News Agency reported this evening. Uh, excuse me. According to the Step News report, a new order was given to the Euphrates Shield forces to withdraw from Manbij outskirts as the Turkish military has canceled the offensive on the city. No footage or photos have been released corroborating these, uh, uh, these claims. And that's kind of what we look for as well, is to see if there's anything on the ground that shows it as of yet. Now, this just came out two hours ago, so I, I have nothing on it either to be able to confirm one way or the other. But I want you to see what Lindsey Graham says on CBS News uh, right after he has the meeting with President Trump. And this is what really gets me to thinking that, as I've stated already, there may be a war about to erupt with Iran. And in the process, they may still be planning on taking Damascus down. So just listen carefully. See how you come out with this. We had a great lunch. We talked about Syria. And uh, he told me some things I didn't know that make me feel a lot better about where we're headed in Syria. He promised to destroy ISIS. He's gonna keep that promise. We're not there yet. But as I said today, we're inside the 10 yard line and the president understands the need to finish the job. So, <clears throat> regardless of the retreat order and that we're gonna pull our troops out, Things are already changing behind the scenes. And Lindsey Graham is finding out things that he did not know before. Makes you wonder. President Trump, in order to get him back in his uh, corner, had to let him know, listen, we're about to go to war with Iran. I pulled the troops kind of out of harm's way because we're going to do a carpet bombing across this entire region. And maybe even that means that uh, they're going to take out all the Iranian forces inside of Syria. And Iran as well directly. I'm, I don't know. There again, that's a conjecture on my part. 
I'm just watching how the things are developing on the ground, but that's what it appears to be at this point. And speaking of the Kurds, um, uh, hang on one second, I'll get to it in a second here. Okay, okay, also, uh, yeah, let me go back to the Kurds here. A lot of your Kurdish fighters are women. You know, I, I realize that there are Syrians that just do not get along with the Kurdish people, but at least they're more allowed to be liberal and not allowed to have to be prisoners to any particular religion one way or the other. And I'm not against, uh, if women are, are, are Muslim and believe this is the way that they think they should live, hey, they have all the right to do so. And I'm not here to criticize that either. But I think the Syrians and the Kurds could get along. I really think that if they work together, they could work to build a greater Syria. And, you know, hey, Put your, put your arms together and fight for freedom. This is what President Bashar al-Assad stood for to start with. It's one reason why the, the Christians and the Muslims and the, 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 uh, whether you're a Sunni or a Shiite, the Jews, etc., could all live in this one nation in relative decent peace. So stop fighting against one another and join together and drive out the enemy from your country, you know? So I just try to encourage that there. Now, also speaking of this, we're also seeing Iraq now, Damascus is allowing Iraq to hit uh, ISIS targets in Syria, according to the state media. And this Algeria, Al Jazeera is bringing this out, but they said they don't even have to ask Damascus. Damascus is giving them the green light. If you're hitting ISIS targets, take them out. That's an interesting statement, isn't it? Syrian state media says Iraqi forces can now attack ISIS targets inside of Syria without getting approval from Damascus. Said the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad has authorized Iraqi forces to attack ISIL targets inside his country without waiting for permission from authorities in Damascus. Syrian state news agency Sana said the development comes as the two neighbors who are also both allied with Iran work to coordinate their fight against rival groups ahead of a planned U.S. military withdrawal from Syria. There again, like I said, I, I'm, I'm watching. Notice how they say they're allied together with Iran. And so I'm watching how everything is playing out on the ground. I think the U.S. is just trying to pull troops back out of, the, out of harm's way while they get ready to take on Iran. And in their show of force with Iran, they will pretty much dare anybody to get involved. But the U.S. has got to remember, too, Turkey is an is a Iranian ally, and yet Turkey is supposed to be a NATO ally. There's a lot of conflicting uh, interest here in the Middle East right now. Very troubling for me to watch this because it's almost like pot calling kettle black. There's so much evil going on in, in, in this part of the world, and it's coming from every direction, you know, very few, you know, the Syrian people have been the, the true victims of this war that began under Obama's administration to topple President Bashar al-Assad. Why? Because part of that Zionist project, expanding, break it up, turning it into a bunch of little small uh, ethnic states rather than a, a country. That's not my words. That's straight from Barry Chamish when he wrote about his meeting with uh, Yossi Balin, with him and... Uh, uh, the former uh, Israeli news journalist as well. Uh, uh, oh, goodness, I can't even think of his name now. They're still feeling tremendously under the weather there. But anyway, Barry Chalmish and uh, Joel Bainerman, that's who it was, Joel Bainerman, they had a private meeting with, with uh, Yossi Balin, and he, had, he admitted that this is what they were planning on doing. Taking over these nations, breaking them up into small ethnic states so that Israel could control them better. You know, yeah, I mean, what happened to our people? Where, where did we forget about you're not allowed to move your neighbor's landmark? How many more of the commandments of God do we have to break before the world begins to catch on to this that we're not doing anything according to the mandates of the law that Moses set down for us? I'm going to do a series on that before too long, and I'm going to show you all the laws that Moses gave us that have been broken by my own countrymen in the name of what? The greater Israel. 
Now, we have a lot of Israelis that know these things, that know that what's going on is wrong. So it's, it's bothersome to me. Not to mention, listen, let me show you what else is going on. Global research. Body organs over 15,000 Syrians sold in 16 years in the coroner's office. 15,000 Syrians. The director general of the Syrian coroner's office, Hussein Nofel, disclosed that the body organs of thousands of Syrian civilians have been sold in the international black markets over the past six years. We have a accurate information that over 25,000 surgical operations have been conducted in the refugee camps of the neighboring countries and in the terrorist controlled areas in Syria since 2011 to take out the body organs of 15,000 Syrians and sell them in the international black market. Dr. Nofel said, he pointed to high prices of human body organs in the black markets and said kidney is sold for 10,000 in Turkey while the same kidney is sold for 1,000 in Iraq. But in Lebanon and Syria, the price of each kidney is 3,000. Dr. Nofel said the, that other human body organs such as spleen and, and cornea are also sold in the black markets according to the latest reports of children who have been uh, rescued from the camps of Abdullah Muhammad al muhayasini a senior Al-Qaeda-linked cleric and religious leader of the Jayesh al-Fatah terrorist group, are now threatened with danger of trafficking their body organs by the terrorists. Local sources in Idlib province told Al-Akbar newspaper that during the past two weeks, 15 people have been kidnapped from different uh, districts, most of them children. Just take them while they're alive and operate on them and sell their body parts. And this is what, okay, this is what gets me, guys. Do you realize that it is the United States, Saudi Arabia, my own people in Israel, not the Israelis, but the Israeli government, leaders in the Israeli government. It is NATO partners, Britain and France, that have been funding and supplying weapons to these very terrorists that are harvesting these organs and selling them on the black market. I'll put the link in the, in the description below. I, I'm appalled at this. The terrors of war. What do we, what do we become? Jeez. By the way, I did see uh, those, <clears throat> I know people have talked a lot about the, up in New York and Louisiana, those uh, lights that came down. And that is definitely uh, some type of, uh, let, me, let me just, uh, well, let's see if I can pull it up for you real quick. All right, so I wanted to share with you also uh, this clip here where they're talking about both in Louisiana and in uh, New York, wondering if this is not some type of alien scenario of uh, using some type of uh, weapon to, some kind of laser, laser beam weapon to actually shoot these transformers. And so this video here was the best one we had to where we could actually look at this um, and I was being told that if you look at this frame by frame, you can actually see that it's coming down from above. Uh, I froze the video on this particular frame just to be able to share with you guys. And that's actually not the case. Uh, if you look at the blue beam coming down right here, if it was coming down on this transformer that's in behind this building, you know, in behind this gas station here on the back street here, that blue beam would have had to have been on the back side of this shell gas station. So, but the light actually comes right across. You can see it right through there. You can see the light coming down through here and it's actually on this side. So that tells me that it is caused by the camera that's actually viewing this. Uh, see, you can see it again. Just watch it there. It's in front of the shell sign there. See, the whole time, all the way across, even to here as the camera moves everything and as the things are being uh, fired up there. Now, power surge more than likely uh, is what's causing this, but that's a major power surge. And, uh, but on that one part there, let me back up a little bit more for you here. So you can just see it as they captured this. Really awesome uh, capturing there. But even on that there, you can, you can see it as well. The red here, both sides, but I, I can see it better from where I'm sitting here. 
then you see the blue light is actually on top of the the red very little but it's just the reflection of the light and the camera lens itself causing it to make it look like it's coming from up high because of that but it's not it actually it is uh right there it's the can it's the, the 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 camera itself that causes the reflection in the lens of the camera uh, so i i did think myself guys like many of you no doubt that you know this might have been um might have been there you go right there good example right there see the whole corner of the building right there you can't see because the reflection in the camera lens has has blacked out or you know turned that out blue there and but yet the transformers much further behind that corner of that gas station there so no uh, it's all there on a back street so there's no way that would have happened so there it is again and, and you really would think i mean it looks like it is like blue lights are coming down other than uh, and if you'll even look notice on the power lines look here on the power lines see how the it's on this side of the power lines whereas if it was really a beam coming down it would have been on the back side of the power lines hitting that transformer over there so no, it does not look like it's pretty awesome, but no, it doesn't look like it's anything as uh, some people have thought it to be. So, and those are birds, by the way, or something, or no, I'm sorry, maybe it's still the camera lens that you see popping up in there. So, any rate, I'm Steve Benu, you're watching Israeli News Live. I always try to tell you the truth here. Thank you for watching. Shalom.